Hello, welcome to this video series on using Python for post-processing CFD results. So, now that the installation of software is done, let's test the installation and understand the spider development environment a little better. You can start spider by just double clicking the icon on your desktop or just type in spider at the terminal. This will start spider ID and show you this window. The first thing you have to do is open a new file for writing your code and save it with an appropriate name describing your code. Let's say testid.py. Remember to add the extension .py to tell your computer that it is a python script file. Let us now write a simple one-line code just to test that python is installed properly. So let us type in print followed by a string within quotes. Well if you are wondering what I just typed, the sentence in quotes namaste cha swagatam means hello and welcome in Sanskrit. Now let's run this code by either pressing F5 or clicking on the run button and you will see whatever you typed as an argument for print function appears in the python console. When running the code for the first time you may be presented with this configure dialog box. In that case just select the execute in current interpreter and then click run. Now let's look at the parts of this development environment. This large white space is where we write all our code and is called as editor. At the lower right corner we have a python console. This is where our code runs and prints the output. We can also type our code here for testing purposes and all the variables from the code can be accessed from here and thus it serves as a great debugging tool. The python interpreter can be stopped or restarted at any time by clicking this button, which may be required for killing our running program before it finishes execution or to reset all our variables. Also it may be required to force re-importing of libraries because ipython by default does not import the libraries every time to reduce the overhead associated with importing libraries again and again. Towards the right top corner we have this region which has three tabs object inspector, variable explorer and file explorer. The object inspector is the place where the documentation is shown as we write our code. The trigger for showing documentation is mostly the left parenthesis after the method's name. That is, if I type np.sqrt and open the parenthesis, it will show the documentation for square root function. The variable explorer tab shows the variables available in the code. I will talk about this and array visualizer in more detail a little bit later. Finally, the file explorer tab shows us the file system on the computer and allows us to work with files and folders from within the IDE itself. I have never used this feature so I don't know any better. Let's now test the other libraries which we installed. To use any library, we have to first import the library. To do this, we use the import keyword. There are a few ways of importing modules, but the way in which I normally import modules is by using, for example, import numpy as np. Here we imported the numpy library and now on we can refer to it as np instead of numpy. Well, 
This is a standard way in which NumPy library is imported by most of the programmers. To use the library, we can now just type np followed by period. The NumPy library is really huge and I will dedicate a full video for introducing this library. But as of now, let's just test the installation by using a simple function called linspace. The linspace function is used for creating equispaced values between two given numbers. Let's create 11 values between 0 and 1 and save it in a variable called arr. This will give us values 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on up to 1.0 so let's use np.linspace 0,1,11 let us now run this code and we see no output which is I think obvious because we did not print anything but remember I said I will be looking at variable explorer again Let's see if we can find our variable here. We can see the variable arr here. Let's double click the value and see what happens. We can see the values now in a graphical window which I feel is a great way to visualize data. Continuing with this, let us use another function called random which basically creates a randomly initialized array ranging between 0 and 1. The dimensions of the array are described by the argument passed. Let us create an array of size 20 by 20. So np.random.random .random and we can pass 20 by 20 as an argument. This will create a two dimensional array with 20 columns and 20 rows. Let us run this code and look at it in the variable explorer. Double click the value to see the graphical window and we can see a nice representation of the two dimensional array. Cool isn't it? The colors shown represent the relative value so a small number will be shown with pinkish color and a large value will be bluish in color. This is an amazing tool especially when you are debugging your code. Finally, let's test the installation of matplotlib. The easiest way of importing the matplotlib library is by using import pylab as plt. Truly speaking, this also imports the functionality from numpy but I like to keep the things separate. So let's do some simple plotting to test matplotlib. Let's create an array called x using linspace with 100 values between 0 and 1. So x is equal to np.linspace 0,1,100. This should give us an array of length 100 and the values ranging between 0 and 1. Now let us create another variable called y by squaring the variable x. So y is equal to x asterisk asterisk 2. As you know double asterisk means power in python. Let us now plot this by using plt dot plot and let us pass x and y as arguments and run this code. This shows us a simple line plot. I will be making a complete set of videos on using matplotlib. Basically that is the main goal of this video series. But as of now we have tested the installation and we are ready to advance further. In the next video I will cover the usage of notebook. So see you there. Bye bye.